everybody, welcome back to GTech, and today I've got yet another episode of Talking Tech with Tubers. Love getting to make these videos because I get to talk to some really awesome people. And today I'm joined by none other than Ozzy Talks Hardware. Ozzy, how are you doing today? Doing really, really well. I just got back from grocery shopping at Kroger. Always a great way to end my evening. Okay, so yeah, let's start it off. Um, you know, what's your name? What's your channel topic? What do you make? How long have you been running your channel? Yeah, so my name is Ozzy, and my channel is called Oz Talks Hardware. And the entire premise is to teach people how to save money when building computers. And so that ranges from computer building guides, like fun experiments, but the overarching theme motif that you'll see throughout my videos is I try to do it while spending the least amount of po money possible. So it can get kind of hectic sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Especially with, you know, um, local markets being completely different from place to place oh, yeah. and all that. And I imagine you've had probably a real hard time in the current GPU climate, the shortage and all that, getting parts. Yeah, that's definitely been difficult. In a weird way, it's been a fun challenge in some areas because I've had to kind of pivot in how I make my content. Overall, not very fun. <laughs> no, I feel you there. I bet everyone's failing yeah. it a little bit. So how long have you been running your channel? And like, what did you do before starting uh, to make videos and all that good stuff? Yeah, good question. So I've been doing my channel, I would say consistently since, I think it was end of 2015. November 2015 was when I first uploaded. Prior to that, I had a few other channels, but they never really took off, but this one did, thankfully. The entire time I've been making videos, I've been a student. So I started making videos when I was in high school. I think I was 16 at the time. And I continued throughout college. And only recently did I actually start making videos while also working a full-time job. So prior to making videos, I guess student, um, that's kind of all I've ever been. I did try YouTube full-time briefly, but that was my previous occupation, if you will. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I feel the pressure, you know, I'm a student as well. So, you know, juggling the class loads and finding yeah. time to make videos. Yeah. Um, so what kind of got you interested in tech? Was it has it always been, you know, PC tech or just tech in general? Yeah, it's it's really mostly been PC tech. There are there, there have been moments in my life where I've been interested in consumer technology like phones and and that kind of thing. But it really started when I was 12 and I really wanted to play this kind of low, low end free to play shooter called Project Blackout. And our family computer at the time was like pretty bad. For those of you who know computer specifications, which I'm sure is going to be most of you, it had like 512 megabytes of RAM, had like a single core Pentium. It was just like not good at all. And so as a 12 year old, I was like, okay. I don't have a lot of money. There aren't many ways to make money, but I want to make this computer better or buy my own computer. Did a lot of research, ended up saving money to build a computer. I built it and I just kind of fell in love since then. Like I just continued like the interest in computer parts. And eventually I was like, I may as well just make videos on this. Like <laughs> I enjoy it so exactly. much. Yeah, I want a creative outlet. I may as well just start making content on it. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I got started too. You know, I was like 12 at the time as well. And for I was trying to figure out why my, you know, $100 email machine was terrible at playing Minecraft. Yeah. And then I, f yeah, I, I tried putting it on our family laptop and it ran better. And I'm like, well, why is that? And then eventually I found you can upgrade computers, you can build them from scratch. And I mean, you know, I kind of started right around the same time you did. Um, I started making videos right about when I was 15 on PC hardware and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, nice. It's yeah. it's really interesting how curiosity just kind of sparks that kind of stuff, you know. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, you know, having all of these new parts and stuff to work with, what kind of gets you hyped about, you know, new parts that come out? Are there any specific parts that get, have, you know, really hyped you up recently or? At the beginning when I started making like videos and content, it was always the cheaper stuff because that's the stuff I could afford at the time. And thankfully I'm blessed now where I can afford more high-end hardware because um, I have a full-time job. I thought this would change, yet I'm still only really excited about like the, the low-end mid-range stuff, like the RTX 3080 and like that whole lineup and everything, the RX 6800 XT, that 
those those line of cards those are pretty exciting i was really excited for like the 30 60 level cards and below just seeing how they would perform um what kind of value we could get out of them and then also the rise in apu so still the thing that like gets me really excited is the i guess more affordable hardware that you can most people can buy um, absolutely and that hasn't changed <laughs> yeah i've i've had a lot of people say that um because you know that's kind of what like even you said, that's what a lot of people can afford. What It's kind of like their starting point to be able to get into the hobby and all that good stuff. And I mean, I'm sure you know, like both you and I, we've, you know, we started out at kind of that more entry level yeah. range. Like I remember my first PC, I bought a 4690K and a GTX 960, which I actually still have the graphics card way back there. I, I'm keeping it. You it's, kept it? It's I, a keepsake. That's for me. amazing. You know, I wish I did that. <laughs> That's one of yeah. my regrets is not saving any, well, most of my old hardware or taking pictures of my builds as I like. Oh, yeah. Along. So it's kind of a big question with like a lot of tech YouTubers. Um, what do you do with, you know, all the hardware either that you get sent or the hardware that you stockpile? Great question. There are essentially three different options that you have. A, you can keep it if you need the part for a future review or for like a comparison. I think that's what a lot of people do. Um, B, you can sell it. You either just resell the product or you build a computer out of it, you sell the computer, or you can just give it away. So if you don't need it, you're just like, oh, I'll pass it along to like friend, family member, or if you want to do a giveaway. I, I keep my parts. And I think part of it is because I'm like a hoarder. Like I, <laughs> I need to probably like work on that because in my head, I'm like, okay, I've used this part, I've tested it, I've benchmarked it, I probably don't need it. But on the off chance that I do, I'm going to keep it and then I forget about it. And then oh, when yeah. I'm redoing inventory, like the second time that year, I'm like, oh, wait, I still have this. Like, <laughs> yep. what, what should I do with it, you know? And so that's actually what my, my next video is going to be on. I've, I've just had so many parts stockpiled that I've had to figure out a way to get rid of them. And so it's been an interesting process. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, out of all those parts, what if, like, have you, do you have any favorites that you've worked with in the past? Oh, easily the GT1030. Yeah, I think I've made the most amount of content on that one piece of hardware than any other piece of hardware out there. I absolutely love that card. When it came out and it was actually like $65 brand new and it was available and you could play modern games at like 1080p low, it was just like amazing. You could throw it into any office PC build and you would have like a decent HTPC. Yeah, so I, I just love that card. So, you know, out of all the videos that you've made and by extension, any of that you've made with the GT 1030, are there any like specific videos that you've, you know, loved uh, any, of, any of them that are like your favorites? One that immediately comes to mind right now is one that I made with my little brother. It's not super popular, but I he helped me build a water cooling PC. It was my first custom loop and it was his first computer build. It was kind of chaotic because I've never done custom water cooling before and he's never built a computer before. It was kind of a mess, but it, it was so much fun to make. Um, I think the video came out great he was so good on camera too he was hilarious <laughs> and i think we bonded over it so oh, that was i think that's my number one he probably figured oh you're you're the computer expert you know this but you know going into the custom water cooling you're like hey don't look at me for the answers <laughs> yeah i did so much research beforehand because i didn't want to mess anything up <laughs> oh absolutely um so you know what what is your current you know gaming and editing machine look like like what are the what are the specs what kind of specs do you run my cpu is a ryzen 5 2600x my motherboard is some b450 um i th i think it's the bazooka v2 from msi but i gotta double check um i have 16 gigs of ram in dual channel which I desperately need to upgrade. Now I'm starting to edit videos in 4K in DaVinci Resolve, and sometimes it won't even load up. Like it will just crash once I click it because I don't have enough RAM. So I have to upgrade that, but I have that. And then I think my video card is an RTX 2060 Founders, 1.5 terabytes of storage total, something like that. I have a 650 watt power supply and then a Fractal Meshify C Mini. So it's there are definitely areas where I need to upgrade. When I built it, it was 
great, but themes have kind of become more intense, and so I, I definitely need to <laughs> upgrade it a little bit. That's kind of the big thing with building computers is that you build them around what your needs justify, and then you can always upgrade down the line. Um, so, you know, in your example, you're like, oh, I could use a little bit more RAM, but that's, you know, that's an easy thing to do, so... Yeah, in some cases too, because I make budget computer builds, it's like I feel like I should be using budget parts in my main system because it's like <laughs> that's the kind of content I make. Yeah. So I kind of feel like a fraud if I don't in some ways. <laughs> but so in terms of actually filming, what kind of like what kind of gear do you use to make your videos? You know, cameras, lights, anything like that. It's gone through a lot of iterations. I think a lot of content creators kind of go through a process where. They try to get all this like really high end gear and they have a lot of different parts. But then at least for me, I got to the point where it was just like, I feel like I have too much gear. Like I don't need all this. So I kind of simplified it. So now I have a Panasonic G7 with a kit lens and then a 25 millimeter lens as well. I have a ring light from newer. It was pretty inexpensive, maybe like $40 or so. And I think my mic is a Fifine K670, which I got for $50. I think it was a review sample, but it usually goes for about $50. And that's basically it. And then I have a, a smooth head tripod as well. So I can get like nice pans if I want. I guess that's four different parts total, but it used to be like eight at some point. And then I, it was like, it's too much. Oh yeah. <laughs> too many things. I mean, you're keeping it simple. That's that's actually almost exactly what I use. Like, I have a G7 right here. I'm using the kit wow. lens. I've got a yeah. newer ring light. How is yours like a camera mounted one or like a tripod sized one? I think it might be the camera mount. Like, do you have a camera mount in the middle of the ring light? No, I mean, for me right now, my ring light is, it's like this big. It's like a 14 inch oh. one sitting on a tripod. Oh, I see. That's what this light is right here. Okay, I see what you mean. So I have the tripod one. But okay, I do okay. have a separate, like, hot shoe mount. Okay, that. I gotcha. Yeah, I thought yeah. about getting myself a little light for my camera. Um, it's good to know that's, you know, we're using the same camera, though. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I would say it's probably my best investment. Because I, I think I got it for, like, 600 on with a bundle, mm -hmm. like, in 2016. And I've, I don't feel a need to upgrade. I want to. Mm -hmm. but I don't need to. And I think it'll last me another three years or so at least. I totally agree. Like, I feel like I could get myself another lens or two just to change up shooting style, but otherwise the camera does what I need it to. So It's really good. I love mine, yeah. <laughs> um, so I was going to say, out of all of your equipment, what could you not live without? But it sounds like your equipment is kind of, you know, you, you just kind of use the necessities. Yeah, I guess the camera, but I feel like that's a cough out answer because it's like, well, <laughs> obviously, like if I don't have the camera, yeah. I can't really do anything. That's a that's a good question. I would say recently probably my headphones. I got these on sale as a Christmas gift to myself last year. What model are those? Are those, they look like Sony's or Bose? They're Bose. They're the Quiet Comfort C thirty five twos. I think. Okay, cool. I think that's what it is. Yeah. I'll have to look into those because I'm like getting in the market for wireless noise canceling headphones myself. I I love them because I, I use them for things even outside of like making videos too. Like I use them for work. If uh, things are loud when I'm sleeping, I'll put them on to help me sleep better. They're just really good. Okay, so when you're making videos, what's kind of your routine? Like how do you stay organized with everything? So in terms of organization, I use like Google Drive for most things. And the process is idea. So I'll just have like a list of ideas and I'll jot them down whenever I get them, usually on a Google sheet or something. Um, and then I script music. Some of my reactions are scripted notes, pretty much everything is scripted. So I'll, I'll do most of the scripting. Um, there's some parts that I can't script, but I'll do most of the scripting. And then after that, I'll do most of the recording. I try to do it in batches so then I can just get as much recording done and be as efficient as possible. Because if I'm being honest, I don't really like the recording process. I think 
That's one of my least favorite portions of doing everything. I feel like that's a surprise for a lot of people. I want to get it done. I'm very results oriented, so I like editing a lot because I can see everything coming together, like all the pieces coming together. I'm like, okay, this is like starting to, to look pretty good. So yeah, I do all that and then I'll, I'll edit, uh, of course. And usually I'll edit on my SSD and then I'll archive on my hard drive. And then if I don't have any more space on my hard drive, I'll put it on my external hard drive. It's a pretty simple process, but I feel like I could be more efficient because I see a lot of content creators do things insanely efficiently. And I'm like, ah, oh, I could I could be like that. Yeah, I mean, it seems like what you've got now works though. You've got, you know, everything planned out properly, you know, kind of what steps you need to hit in what order. So, I mean, it sounds like what you're doing right now works. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. It's It's been working for me and I've I've been pretty, uh, pretty comfortable with it for the last like year or so. So in terms of like, you know, making videos, I know a lot of people try to breach into the tech tuber market, kind of myself included, and I've got a couple smaller channel friends. Um, what kind of advice would you give to, you know, smaller tech channels just kind of starting out? Ooh, that's a good question. I would say the first thing is to just start making content. It's really easy to overthink it, but you don't have to. So just start making content. And then if there's an idea that you think will do well, try it out. If it doesn't, go back to the drawing board. The beauty of starting off fresh on YouTube, it's a blessing and a curse. It's hard because you have to gain traction. But once you just get that one video that kind of hits, it doesn't even have to get millions of views. If it even hits like a thousand views or like a couple of thousand views, you know that that's something some people are interested in. And so you can capitalize on that. You can start making content geared towards that subject matter. But you just kind of have to throw a lot of things at the wall and yeah. hope something sticks. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess in terms of, you know, your videos, did you, what video of yours did you have that kind of helped you break into the market? Yeah, the first video that I remember doing well was my $25 gaming PC video. It wasn't the first that did well per se, but it was definitely like a viral video. I don't exactly remember how or when it happened, I think somebody shared it on Reddit and then it got traction that way and then the algorithm picked it up. Yeah, I mean, it's those extreme budget builds that I've seen do really well on a lot of tech channels. Mm -hmm. So next, let's just kind of figure out who is who is Ozzy? So when you're not running your channel, like what do you do behind the scenes? Currently, I'm working. I'm a software engineer at a startup here in Atlanta. So if there are any C programmers, I do like low level programming in C and C++, which I really enjoy. Um, so that's the standard, I guess, nine to five for me. Um, uh, I like hanging out with people. I like that. Um, I enjoy playing sports, pick up sports with people. That's also pretty fun. I'm pretty involved with like my church. I think that's where most of my friends, my close friends come from too. I'm trying to think, is there anything else about me that might be mildly interesting? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, well here, I've got a couple extras. Um, you know, what, what kind of, what kind of music do you like? Just kind of any particular Ooh, songs? Good question. That's a great question. I would say my most listened to genres, probably R and B or folk music. Oh really? So. Yeah, I, I really like folk music. I think part of it, too, is because I started... I'm teaching myself guitar, but I, I picked up ukulele. Nice. Because it's just an easier guitar. Pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah, less strings, less thinking. It's just <laughs> it's simpler. You just kind of jam out um, with it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's, I think it's a crowd pleaser, too, which is probably part of the reason why I chose it. <laughs> but yeah, folk music, R&B. Uh, I would say some artists that I really like are... Uh, Sufjan Stevens, Kanye West is an obvious one, Frank Ocean, um, Rivers and Robots. Um, surprising, Billie Eilish recently I've started listening to more because she just dropped a recent album. Okay. Um, and she has some pretty good songs on that. So I wasn't, she wasn't on my radar before, but I'm starting to enjoy some of her stuff. Can I ask you the same question? I'm just, I'm really into music. Yeah, absolutely. So is, um Personally, I switch between two main genres. If I'm at my computer, I'm usually listening to like EDM. Um, I don't know if you know of Monster Cat. 
Yeah, I know Masaka. I listen to a lot of some of their older stuff, and then they're more, you know, vocal EDM. So they're like their house, their trance kind of stuff like that. Just kind of upbeat um, vocal EDM stuff. And then if I'm in my car, because my car is, you know, old as dirt and doesn't have Bluetooth or an aux jack, I'm listening to like 80s rock, stuff like that usually. Yeah. 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 yeah, CDs that you burn yourself, or oh, I gotta, I, I should totally do that. <laughs> I don't have a CD <laughs> burner on me, but my car has a CD player, so I could totally do yeah. that. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Now you're giving me ideas. Now I, now I have to do that. <laughs> um, update me. Let me know if you do it. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. Um, so what about like shows and movies? Are you watching anything in particular? Yes, I'm watching. <laughs> I'm watching the iCarly reboot. Nice. Which seems super juvenile, but it's it's better than I expected. Yeah. Um, and I'm watching My Hero Academia. I'm trying to keep up with that. Yes. How far in are so you? So that's pretty good. I think I'm up to date. If there was a new episode this past Saturday, I didn't watch it. Okay. But I think I'm up to date. Nice. Yeah. Me and Good my to that. I, uh, me and my sister, we just finished. Uh, or well this is at least a week or two ago but we got caught up on season five um and it's funny she's actually getting my dad to watch it and that's kind of funny to me because really? he's like you know <laughs> he's not he's not into all that sort of stuff he watches sports and stuff i mean he's like he's in his 50s so it's funny to come downstairs and he and my sister are just watching my hero and i'm like oh this is great <laughs> That is so impressive. Tell your sister that I need to learn her persuasion skills because I've been trying to persuade my roommates to watch it with me and they will not get anywhere close to it. Hey, I mean, you know, despite it being one of the more like, oh, what's the word for it? I don't, I don't want to say it's one of the more like normie animes, but it's like one of yeah. the most mainstream ones. It's like it's super easy yeah. to get into. Yeah, so basically my last question was like, what kind of, what do you like doing when you're not making videos, like hobbies and stuff? Um, but you said, you know, you're playing guitar, you're hanging out with friends, good stuff like that. So I would say that's, that's basically the gist of it. Um, yeah, I like being around people. I like strumming on uke and guitar if I have one by me and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, and reading, cool. I've been reading more recently. Because my friend really? has been recommending me books, yeah, and they're really good. So, something I never okay, thought cool. I'd be doing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you there. I haven't read, sat down to read anything in a really long time. Um, what's kind of, what are some of the stuff? What's some of the books you're reading? Oh no, he's pausing. There are. Uh... <laughs> you don't. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. That's perfectly fine. No, it's fine. I have nothing to hide. Um, so there. <laughs> They're Christian romance novels. <laughs> it's okay. such a weird genre. But they are so good. I can't explain it. Are they? So good. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, and then there's one more question that I want to start asking people. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of YouTube channels do you like watching, whether tech or otherwise? I really like that question. Um... I would say it really depends on, I guess, where I am in life. When I was moving into my current apartment, I was watching a lot of, a lot of like interior design, stuff like that. But I will say consistently, I really like either commentary videos or like educational videos. So like, I think it's Kurz, Kurzgesagt. Kurzgesagt. Yeah, yep. yeah, them. I, I was sorry, just watching them earlier. Here. It's yeah, something which one, like that. Which one did you watch? The most recent one, I think it was the Immune System, part one. Oh, yeah. I added that to my watch later, which is now 3,000 videos. So I need There to you go. <laughs> I've recently gone into is like these SpongeBob conspiracy videos, which talk <laughs> about like different SpongeBob theories as to like why these characters are the way they are. I don't know. Really? It's just, if someone does like a lot of research and they provide like a, a case for their point and they like walk me through it especially if it's a point that seems like super ridiculous mm -hmm. i'll probably enjoy it if people can sit there and just ramble about stuff but they're like like you said they're consistent and they have the facts to back it up I i'll sit down in here and listen to you all day <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's awesome like i'll listen to it in the car when i'm working out you know there you go um in terms of uh other types of videos 
I, I mean, tech videos, I, I do watch. There's a time where, like, I didn't watch any tech videos because I was so burnt out, like, earlier this year. But okay. now it's it's been really cool because I think I'm I'm getting back into, like, really enjoying tech stuff again. So, I mean, mm. I watch, like, Linus. I'll watch, like, Optimum Tech, um, Hardware and Box Team, Steve from Gamers. Well, any Steve there is, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> yeah. computer hardware. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I'll I'll start watching it and keeping up with it now. Okay, that's you know that's basically all my questions. Um, oh, I just had one more that I wanted to ask you personally. Um, I when you do all your little, I, I call them your little dance skits. It's when you like you know you got the B roll going, you got the royalty free music, and you're just kind of jamming out. Where do you get your background music from? Because I'm just using YouTube Audio Library, and I'm like, man, sometimes I just want songs that don't have 16 repeating measures. I feel the pain. So before I used to get them from Epidemic Sound, the reason why I used them was because I was a part of full screen, and so I got it for free, like a part of my like full screen thing. I'm not in full screen anymore, so at this point, I just kind of use whatever music I, I like, even if it's copyrighted. And then I'm just like, okay, I guess I'm not making money on this video. And the reason why I do that is only because now that I'm working a full time job, like that's a sacrifice I can make and I'm willing to make. Okay. You know, okay. I'll just have to make money in other areas. So affiliate stuff, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, I'm okay losing money on that now. Gotcha. Okay. So you're looking at YouTube more as like, you know, the hobbyist perspective. Oh yeah. 100%. I definitely think I could go back to it being like a job type thing. Yeah. Um, but I like, I, I think I want to try the hobbyist route because I, I think that's when I enjoyed it the most. I didn't really see it as like an obligation, but just something that I like an opportunity, I guess, like something I just get to do. Yeah. So I'll, I'll update you on how that goes because I'm just starting that now. <laughs> Sounds good. You know? Well, awesome. Very cool. Um, yeah, that's basically all my questions. So Ozzy, thank you so much for sitting down and just, you know, chatting with me for a little bit for this, what, 40 minutes, something rough like that. Yeah. I mean, thank you so much for choosing me to be on your, your, not stream. I was going to say stream podcast. I basically we'll just call it that. a show, but I wouldn't even call it a show, show really. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Ozzy, once again, thank you so much for joining me. Um, and, you know, if you guys like this video, uh, make sure to make sure to tell me what other guys you want me to interview. I'm always down for talking to these guys. Love making these sorts of videos. But, yeah, that's basically going to do it for now. So if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed down below because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one. Honey, I'm a big